Good morning. Graduates, congratulations. You did it. Just as remarkable as today's graduates are the families for the unconditional love and encouragement they provided through the years. I want to thank these parents and grandparents. Your children are amazing. Thank you for sharing them with us and in doing so, enriching our university. Graduates, please join me in applauding your families for everything they have done to make this day possible. <laughs> Graduates, today is the last time you walked into the big house as a Michigan student. When you leave, you will leave as alumni. You say goodbye to a period in your life that can never be repeated and will always be remembered for both its rigor and its freedom. How many times in the past year have you reflected on your career at Michigan where you found yourself thinking, this is the last time I'll cross the Diag. This is my final ride on a bus to North Campus. This is the last time I'll spin the cube. I know the feeling. We are leaving Michigan together, graduates, you and I, where you are embarking on your first job or an advanced degree. I am concluding 45 years in higher education. I could not be more honored than to have my final commencement as a university president be with you, the class of 2014. For all my time at Michigan, it is you, the students, who have made the greatest impression on me. You have made me smile, you have inspired, and yes, you have been an occasional source of irritation. More than anything, you've made a permanent imprint on Michigan and its role as one of the world's great public universities. Fifty years ago, in this stadium, President Lyndon Johnson stood before the class of 1964 and shared his vision of a great society. He spoke of vibrant, muscular cities, of unspoiled waterways and clean air, and of public schools where every child, regardless of income or neighborhood, received an exceptional education. You have a chance, the president told students, never afforded to any people in any age. You can help build a society where demands of morality and the needs of the spirit can be realized in the life of the nation. There was a reason that President Johnson chose Michigan for proposing such an ambitious agenda. He knew, as we all do, that Michigan students make a difference, that morality and spirit are at your core. Students have shaped this university's impact for decades. They worked to plant the first trees on campus. They welcomed a Latino student who had been rejected elsewhere because of his skin color in 1877. Students are responsible for the Block M on the Diag, for co-ed living in the dorms, for demanding greater diversity, and for better seating at football games. I want to single out some students who, in my time on campus, have exemplified what it means to be engaged in the fray. I think of Chris Armstrong, a student government president whose agenda was fairly customary, better dorm food, more liberal housing arrangements, and lower tuition. What set Chris apart was the fact that he is a gay man. That made him a target. He became a national news story because of the very public bullying that he endured. Through it all, he remained true to himself and true to Michigan and chose to speak out for equality, tolerance, and compassion. He let it be known that an offense to one is an offense to all. Armed with dignity and education, he prevailed. I don't think that I have ever been prouder of a student. I remember Denard Robinson. Yeah! I, rem 
remember him for his artistry here in the turf at Michigan Stadium, but more for his joy at being a Michigan student. A year ago at this time, I ran into Denard and his family after commencement. He was showing everyone the campus and asked me to join in a family photo. I have never, ever seen a student athlete embrace the collegiate life with greater gusto. His enthusiasm was infectious, and he made all of us love Ann Arbor just a little bit more. I remain inspired by Mohammed Dar, who was the first in his family to attend college, while his four older brothers each went to jail. Paying for college was a struggle. His father declined health insurance and instead used the extra dollars for his son's education. It was a choice that proved fatal. He died from cancer during Mohammed's junior year. How did Mohammed Dar respond to this terrible blow? He chose to help others by leading the Michigan Student Assembly. He traveled to Lansing to argue for more state support for higher education. He made it his work to give back, to continue that selflessness today as a physician. I admire students like Courtney Mercier, Andre Wilson, and Daniel Morales, who pushed us and pushed us hard to be a better university. Courtney was incredibly persuasive in her demands that we be greener, and she drove our sustainability initiative. Andre advocated for better health care for graduate students. Daniel was relentless about tuition equality for undocumented students. These students gave the University of Michigan a stronger climate of inclusion, of greater respect for the environment, and increased awareness about economic and legal challenges facing today's families. Deans, administrators, and regents revise rules and create policies. But it's you, the students, who hold our feet to the fire. You move the conversation. You make change with your powerful arguments, your tireless commitment, and your thoughtfulness that surpasses your years. These are the characteristics of Michigan graduates, and they will serve you well as you move forward with your lives. As president, I should be giving you advice on this special day. I should encourage you always to exercise the critical thinking you learned here and give back in the spirit of service that has long defined our university. But I don't need to tell you that. You will do well and you will do right no matter what paths you forward. Instead, I want to thank you. Thank you for making the University of Michigan stronger and smarter and for helping us be more innovative and more creative. Thank you for being the talent our society turns to for better schools, healthier communities, and more effective technologies. And thank you for making my time as president the most fulfilling of my career. I began by saying that we're all experiencing a bit of nostalgia, knowing our Michigan moments are becoming fewer and fewer. This is my last student story. It's the 10th inning of the deciding game of the College World Series. The game is tied, and two of your teammates are on base, and you step up to the plate. You are a freshman. A national television audience is watching you and only you. Samantha Finley does not blink. Not only does she hit the ball, she drives it deep into the left field bleachers. What a moment. Rounding the bases, hearing the screams, knowing you just helped deliver the 2005 national championship, the first ever for Michigan's softball team. It was so Michigan. The competitive spirit, the profound sense of accomplishment, the reward of helping others be the best, the unbridled joy of being a Michigan Wolverine. The University of Michigan is a university of students who want the best. You're Courtney, and you want a healthy planet. You're Andre, and you want equality and inclusion. 
You're Muhammad, and you want affordable education for all. You, the class of 2014, are our collective hopes as a society. With your dreams and discoveries, you will change the world more than you ever changed your university. And that is a graduation gift to all of us. So for today, goodbye. For tomorrow, good luck. And forever, go blue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.